Hi, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of EDOT TV. Today's special episode, I'd like to discuss the weekly nuggets that took place last week. I want to tell you what's hot, what happened in this previous week. Kind of like the winners and losers and, you know, who really made last week really hot. First off, I'd like to start off with, you know, um, the NFL. Earlier in the week, unfortunately, you know, I'm sure a lot of people could relate to this, but uh, Brian Westbrook, uh, running back for the Philadelphia Eagles, was released, along with LaDainia Tomlinson, a running back for the San Diego Chargers, was released. Uh, Brian Westbrook, he's really a touchy situation because he's suffered a lot of concussions, so teams may feel that, you know, um, they really don't want to take a, a concussion case on their hands. So the Philadelphia Eagles felt that, you know, they would use the excuse as he's going to make too much money next year, but we all know what the real reason is. And as far as the Danian Thomason, I mean, for him, I mean, hey... Um, his skills are diminishing, and often with great players, they believe in themselves more than, you know, what people believe in them, and um, he just doesn't see it yet, but, you know, hey, he was good in his heyday when he was the best, he was the best. Um, in this past weekend, we had the NFL Combine taking place. It's kind of like, how should I say, a job interview for the college football athletes where they interview you, they uh, put you on the football field and, and a whole bunch of obstacle courses to, for you to showcase your physical talent. Usually there's news and notes and, you know, studs that come out of nowhere that, you know, blow everybody away. There really wasn't a lot of that. I mean, I guess the only thing you could say that came out of it was Ndamukong Su, defensive tackle from Nebraska, as well as Gerald McCoy defensive tackle from Oklahoma those two guys just pretty much uh, put themselves head and shoulders above everybody else in the draft in terms of who's going to be uh, chosen number one and two and considering they're at the same position it's just going to be interesting because you know they're going to be headbutting until you know the big day of the draft and whatnot now let's switch topics and move to the NBA um, in terms of the biggest marquee game of the uh, week, it had to be the L.A. Lakers hosting the Denver Nuggets. I mean, this could be a preview of the Western Conference Finals. And the Nuggets, I mean, hey, man, they were really playing good this entire game. They had the lead almost up to 11 points at certain parts of the game. But, you know, the lead was, was, was uh, fluctuating in terms of they had the lead. But, you know, the highest it went was 11. And, um, you know, they were really playing well. But, unfortunately, in the fourth quarter, with, uh, I would say, two minutes left in the fourth quarter, Carmelo Anthony, their superstar player, fouled out. And they didn't score for the rest of the game. And that proved to be the fatal blow that, you know, put the nail in the coffin for the Nuggets. Because the Lakers went on to win this game 95-89. And uh, to put salt into the wound, Kobe Bryant only scored 12 points in this game. So it was more like the whole team chipping in. And uh, Kobe Bryant just pretty much, you know, being the facilitator. Now let's move on to something that I think the whole country was, you know, disappointed but watched at the same time. I would like to move to the Olympics, and you know what I'm going to talk about. USA versus Canada and the gold medal hockey game. I mean, me, I'm not a big hockey fan, but hey, I had to get down and go out to the local sports bar and, and, and watch what was going on. I mean, people were comparing this to like, you know, Brazil playing USA in the World Cup of soccer or something. Because, you know, Canada invented hockey and USA wasn't even supposed to medal in the Olympics. And here they are meeting in the gold medal round, or I should say the gold medal game. Um, it was very exciting. You know, Canada jumped out to a 2 nothing lead and the USA clawed back on the goal of Zach Parisi with less than 20 seconds left in the third period to tie it up and send it into overtime. And um, USA played valiantly, they played courageously, but unfortunately, the Canadians were too much with the game-winning goal by Sid the Kid Crosby. And, uh, you know, he shot them the gold medal. And um, Canada was victorious in a 3-2 victory at the USA. I know coming in second stinks, but hey, USA wasn't even supposed to medal. So they could take some solace in the simple fact that they're the second best country in the world regarding hockey. Now, I would like to switch topics to college basketball. This past weekend, on Saturday night, we had a marquee matchup. The Syracuse Orangemen were hosting the Villanova Wildcats. It was a good game. In terms of the, the what happened earlier in the day, now you had number one Kansas lose, and you had number two Kentucky lose. So this set up the perfect storm for number four rated Syracuse playing number eight rated Villanova. All Syracuse needed to do was win. And let me tell you, did they win? I mean, I don't really want to go into detail, but it was 95-77. It really wasn't looking too good in terms of Villanova. They didn't really come to play. 
And Syracuse, that zone, it's looking tremendous. It's looking stupendous. I mean, it's looking better than when Carmelo Anthony was there and they won in the early 2000s. I'm not predicting a championship for Syracuse yet, but that game sure was a fore forerun to what could happen in the future. That's all I have for you in this episode of E.TV. Peace.